So yesterday uh, we introduced lattice-based cryptography and how we use a hard problem on lattices to build uh, encryption, encryption schemes. Sorry. So I noticed that some people arrived yesterday and maybe you don't remember everything, so we start with a short uh, uh, <laughs> short slide on what we did yesterday, sorry. Okay, so we saw that uh, lattice-based cryptography uses uh, uh, hard, so cryptography in general uses hard problems to, to build construction and, and uh, be sure that they are, they are secure. And for lattice-based cryptography, we use uh, hard problem on lattices like SVP, Approx SVP. Uh, from those problems, we build the learning with those problem, which is uh, the problem we use the most to build a cryptographic construction. So as a very quick uh, reminder of what we did yesterday, the approx short vector problem is finding a short vector in a lattice. And we allow an approximation factor, as it's very, very hard without. It's also very hard with an approximation factor. But the approximation factor asks you to find a short x with, which has a norm less than the approximation factor times the first minimum of your lattice, okay? It's a very hard problem. Uh, that's on uh, this uh, conjecture that we, we base all lattice-based crypto. So uh, it's NP hard for a constant approximation factor. For a polynomial one, uh, the best known algorithms are exponential in the dimension of the lattice. And for an exponential approximation factor, you have a, a, a polynomial time algorithm to solve this problem, like LLL, that you know, uh, probably know. Uh. Okay, and from, uh, so we cannot, we saw yesterday that we cannot directly use this problem because the input of uh, SVP or approx SVP is the basis of a lattice, and we have no ID, or we could have IDs, but uh, for some lattice it's very easy, and for some lattice it's very hard. So to use a, a problem like that in cryptography, you want to be sure that it will be always difficult to solve, so instead of using SVP, we use LWE, which is also a lattice problem, but a bit different, because this time, instead of given any basis, you give a uniform matrix A, so uniform in the Q of size M times N, so M has to be larger than N, and you give B, which is equal to A times S, a secret, plus some noise that we call E. So E is a, a noise, and it's, we, call, we, we call it also the error, because it's like solving a linear system of equations, but with some noise, some error. So if you don't have noise, uh, as we saw yesterday, it's easy. But if you have a good noise, short enough, not too large, not too short, it will become very hard to solve. And that's the learning with our problem. And what uh, Regev showed like in 2005 is that solving this problem is at least as hard as solving approx SVP for any lattice. So even in the worst case instances, okay? And we also saw yesterday that there are two variants of LWE, a search version, where we ask you to find the secret, and a decisional version, which asks to distinguish AB with B uniform from AB with B equal AS plus C. E. So I give you AB, and you have to tell me, is B uniform or is B AS plus C? E? Those two variants are equivalent, are hard to solve, and we use them to build the Regev's encryption scheme. So it's a public key encryption. You, are, you have a key gen algorithm which generates your keys, a secret key and a public key. The secret key is S, your secret. The public key is AB. Your encryption scheme allows you to encrypt one bit here, so it's just an example. We will see today that we can do much better than one bit. To do that, you sample a random R binary, which is binary, and you multiply a by R and B by R. And when you multiply B by R, you add Q over two times M. So which is either zero, either Q over two. And given your encryption on the secret, on the secret you can decrypt. 
by computing V minus U times S. Okay. S is your secret. When you know it and you, you subtract R times A times S from V, you have something small, which is R times E, so small compared to Q. And you have this Q over 2 times M, uh, which is either 0, either Q over 2. So then, you know that it is, if it's close from 0, uh, the, encrypted, the encrypted bit is uh, 0. If it's close from 2 over 2, Q over 2, it was 1. So that's the, the encryption scheme. It's quite simple. And yesterday, we saw the security proof, showing that, OK, if you have this scheme, and if you know that LW is a hard problem, then this scheme is secure for the in -CPR security, which is the first level of security that you want for an encryption scheme. And yesterday, we, we finished on this uh, slide. So, OK, LW is used uh, as a basis for many constructions. It's very nice because you can build a lot of applications and not only encryption. And with this uh, reduction uh, from our problem and that it is like approx SVP to LWE, you are quite confident that it's, uh, your, your construction will be secure. So it's nice. But you have those big matrices because uh, to be difficult to solve, uh, uh, those lattice problems and the dimension have to be at least uh, 512, let's say. Sometimes you need even uh, 1,000. So uh, having the, uh, this big matrix of size m times n and multiply it by a vector, it's very costly. And it pra in practice, it will be too costly for cryptography, for cryptographic application. So when you look at the NIST uh, finalist and standardized, standardized uh, constructions, so we discussed a bit about it yesterday. Uh, here it's a, it's a, it's a finalist. Uh, three of them are based on uh, what we call structured variants of LWE. So there are two well-known variants, ring and module LWE, that we will define today. And there is another problem also based on, um, on those rings, uh, which is untrue, which is a bit different. So we will not, um, I will not define it today, but uh, you, you can know that there is another way to do uh, encryption and signatures with uh, this untrue uh, problem. So today we will focus on module, the module LWE problem. Uh, which uh, we will see how it works and why is it more efficient and why we can still trust this problem. So, okay, in theory, that's what we, we are doing. So that's nice, but in practice, we cannot do that. The first thing is that all those reductions uh, gives you uh, a lot of uh, conditions on the parameter, so on the dimension, on the size of your error, on the size of the approximation factor, and a lot of... Uh, so I hide some parameters here to to be uh, clearer, but you have to know that to choose those parameters, we don't choose uh, the condition given by the reduction, otherwise it will be way too costly, even more than just using uh, unstructured uh, matrices. So this step we use uh, crypt analysis, meaning we are looking at the best attacks to solve the problem. We say, okay, now we have this scheme, what will be the best attack to obtain an information of this scheme? So the best attack will be to reduce a lattice. So you have to choose it carefully. And to re when we, we look at this lattice, we know what does it cost to reduce it. And this, um, we make sure this cost is high enough for the scheme to be secure. Okay? So we have a, a level of security. So usually the level of security uh, to the uh, 128, it's the first level, <coughs> meaning that the best known attack on, um, against the scheme will have at least this complexity. So when we define the schemes and the reduction, we do everything with uh, asymptotic uh, parameters. And at, at some point in practice, we use the best known attack to choose a parameter. So that's the first difference between the theory and the practice. And the second one is that 
we have to use a structure variance of LWE because otherwise it would be way too costly also. So instead of having this big matrix, we will see just after what does it mean. We have a structured one. But it's not uh, for free because what was nice with LWE is that uh, you have this reduction, this worst case to average case reduction, and you are very confident that FLWE is a hard problem because you have those worst case instance on, a, on lattice uh, problems and you are quite sure that they are very difficult to solve. When you use a structured variance, uh, you, will be, you, have the, you will still have a reduction, but not on any lattices anymore. It will be on a restricted class of lattice. And then it's not, let's say it's not 100% sure that it's also, all, also uh, uh, as hard as, a, um, as a, so the instance in this uh, restricted class will be as hard as in the general case. So it's also a, an important question. Okay. So the idea is uh, quite simple. Uh, for no, for LWE, everything was in Z to the N. And the idea to have some structure to go, to go faster in the operation is uh, to consider, instead of Z to the N, a ring, a ring of polynomials uh, modulo uh, x to the n plus 1. So n is the power of 2. We'll see why just after. And when you have this ring, uh, you, we will see just after a while your matrix A become a structure in matrix. So the rotation A1, it's a, I will define it just after, is a rotation of a vector. And when A gains some structure, everything go faster. Instead of represented by m times n elements, you, you have a gain of uh, n elements. And uh, uh, when you do computation, when you have some structure in your matrix, you, instead of being uh, quadratic, you are quasi-linear in your, in your computations. So everything becomes more efficient. And as I said, we can show that the, the problem has, are still hard, but not on general lattices, but not on a restricted case of uh, lattices. Okay. So let's go a bit more in details. So I will always uh, keep this ring of polynomials. But you, it's not, uh, it's kind of a consensus in the community because it's a, uh, it's a ring on which uh, we know everything goes well and uh, we can go uh, or computation fast and there is no particular attacks on the problems. But you could consider other rings. This one uh, is, uh, let's say, it's, uh, it's a nice one for us. So n is the power of 2, then the polynomial x to the n plus 1 will be irreducible. It's important. And elements of this ring, it's only a polynomial of degree less than n. Okay. Uh, what is interesting for us is that R is a cyclotomic ring. So it's interesting because it's also the ring of integer of a number field. And we will use those property, uh, those property after. Uh, let's say that uh, in uh, cyclotomic fields, uh, lots of things are easier if you consider those fields. So I, I give a bit more details uh, on, the, on, the, on this definition. You can also see R as uh, uh, the, the polynomials quotiented by a phi of M, uh, which is the M's cyclotomic polynomial of degree N, where N equals to the Euler function of M. And you know the roots of this polynomial, but uh, I think for you, all of this is a uh, it's quite natural, right? If you are all working on polynomials, no? Maybe it's just an idea that I have. Okay. And we define the canonical embedding for an element for an element alpha of k. So sigma, so the canonical embedding of alpha, we evaluate alpha uh, on the mth root of uh, unity uh, of uh, the of the polynomial. So why is it uh, quite easy for us to work with R? It's because it's isomorph to Z to the N. So you have a polynomial 
of degree n, and you can easily represent it by a vector of size n. Okay? So this one is uh, quite easy. And for us, it's very nice, because after, when you consider the multiplication of two polynomials, you can see it as the multiplication of a matrix with a particular structure with a vector. And that this structure that we will find again in our matrix A just after. So we call uh, this matrix nega cyclic because you are doing the rotation of the first column, but each time you are going uh, to the first row, you, you have a negation coming from the fact that you are modulo x to the n plus one. So that's where the minus comes from. And this, as uh, when, you, when you look at it like that, you, I think you see the structure very easily. So now let's go back uh, to our learning with our problem. And in our, in our matrix A, if we define the learning with our problem on this ring R instead of Z to the N, we will find this structure in the matrix. So now A, is sampled not from z to the n, uh, sorry, from uh, zq to the m times n, but it samples from r with two parameters. You, you still have m, uh, m rows, and now you, you have d, which would be the rank d column. So in the case of ring LWE, it's a special case of module where the rank is one. Okay. So each element of r uh, sorry, if each element of A is an element of R, and then when you look at it matricially, it will give you this uh, structured block in your matrix uh, that you multiply by S and you add some error, which, is B, which will be also in R, okay? So the idea is quite uh, direct. Once you, you say, okay, instead of Z to the N, I use this ring R of polynomials modulo X to the n plus one. When you look at it, you, you, the structure appear, appears and uh, you say, okay, no, I have a, a matrix of size m times d, but instead of uh, having m times d elements for, um, no, sorry, in z, it will be of size m times n times d. And so you gain n uh, elements in, the, in, your, in your matrix. Okay, is it clear for now? Yeah, thanks. So if I define it a bit more formally, I also yesterday defined the short integer solution problem, so I can define it also on modules. On the learning with our problem, so if you remember what I defined yesterday, it's exactly the same thing. Unless, uh, I, instead, I, I just replace ZQ by RQ. And the other small difference is that now my Gaussian distribution has to be on R, but as R is isomorph to Z to the N, it's quite easy, and you can also see R as a lattice if you want to. But sampling a Gaussian on R is also very, very easy. There is no, no problem with that. So when I say that, um, that, so this module sees an LWE problem, now we can have the same reductions that for LWE, showing that it's at least as hard as hard problem on lattices, but I told you it's not on every lattices, no, it's on a restricted class of lattices. So by a restricted class of lattices, I meant two class of lattices. The first one is ideals, what we call ideal lattices, and the second one is what we call module lattices. So the name comes from the definition of those uh, two class of lattices. The first one, ideal lattices, it corresponds to ideal of your ring, and the second one to module of your ring. And when you take uh, um, an ideal of your ring, for example, you have to consider an embedding uh, from uh, R to Z, and you apply this uh, embedding to your, to your ideal and it will give you a lattice. 
So any ideal of the ring defines an integer lattices. And it's the same for module. Any module of your ring defines a module lattice. And now when we think about solving the shortest, the shortest vector problem, for example, it will not be anymore on general lattices, but it will be on either ideal lattices, either module lattices. So there is a big question, is it easier to solve SVP or approx SVP or CVP or any of those problems on this restricted class of lattices, which has a different structure that just a general lattice. So when you say, okay, no, I work on ideal lattices, it's a bit different. You know more things on ideal lattices. And you can hope that it will be easier or not. So when, uh, so this idea to use rings, it was in uh, something like 2006, and it was quite direct to, to, to adapt the proof for the CIS problem, the short integer solution problem. For the learning with those problem is, is what a bit more difficult, so it, it took more time. Uh, there was two results in 2000, 2009 and 2010. First, on the search version, because it was a bit easier, and then on the decisional version. So those uh, two results, they, they adapt the original uh, regref uh, proof. So there is no um, classical proof for ring LWE. It doesn't work. And uh, I told you yesterday that for the learning with our problem, LWE, you can consider different uh, distributions for the secret of and for the error, like uh, binary, small uniform, or stuff like that. It's uh, not that easy to show for ring LWE. So the only thing we are sure, the only proof we have, is that we can use the same error and secret. So the, the secret can have the same distribution as the error, so Gaussian, both Gaussian. But there is no proof showing that, uh, for example, binary ring learning with error, so with a binary secret, is still a hard problem. So it doesn't mean that we know how to solve it, because it's uh, used in a lot of applications, like uh, fully homomorphic encryption uses a ring LWE with a binary secret. But there is no proof, as for other variants, to show that it's also a, a difficult problem. So that's for a ring, and then, uh, uh, in 2015, we generalized this ring ID to module. And modules are more general than uh, just uh, uh, this uh, ring LWE problem. So we, we, it allows to prove more, more things. So module, it's uh, in between uh, the general case and the ring case. So there, there was this uh, first adaptation of the regex proof also. So module LWE is at least as hard as solving uh, module approx SVP, the quantum. Recently, we showed that for some work, not all of them, uh, we can also have a classical uh, proof. Uh, it's only for linear rank in the dimension. So it means that uh, for ring, it doesn't work, for example. So small rank, we don't know how to have a classical uh, a classical reduction from a module LWE to, to module approx SVP. And as it's uh, also easier to, not really easier, but uh, you have better properties than in, uh, in the ring variant, we also recently um, have, a, have a results on uh, using other distribution for error and secret uh, than uh, Gaussian. So like a short uniform or um, or binary uh, also, but with also a condition on the, on the rank. So module LWE is used a lot. It's uh, the problem used in those uh, NIST uh, problem which will be standa standardized, like uh, Kyber and Dilithium. And no, the, the, the question, as I said, is really to, to know how difficult are those problems, the hardness. Is it, which one is the hardest one? Which one we should use? Is it better to use module or ring LWE? So that's a picture of what we know on those problems. We know that there is a reduction from approx SVP on idols to ring LWE. That was the first one. 
There is also one from Aprox SVP on IDLO holds to Aprox SVP on module. If you, if you know how to solve on module, you can solve on IDLOs. Between module LWE and Aprox SVP on module, there is an equivalence in the difficulty. You can do the reduction in both so is in both uh, way. So meaning that um, that if you learn how to solve one of those two problems, you have directly uh, an algorithm to solve the other one. And it's not the case for Aprox SVP on ideals and Ring LWE. Here you have only one way in your reduction. So if tomorrow someone solve Aprox SVP on, on ideals, it will not impact the earnest of Ring LWE. This is, this is very important. If you want just to remember one thing of those two talks, you can remember that. Uh, if you break a process VP on, uh, on um, ideals, you will not break ring LWE. So ring LWE on module LWE, you can have also reduction on both directions. Each time you, you lose on parameters, but it's not a, a big deal. So it, it seems that, uh, <coughs> that it's quite uh, safe to use module LWE as long as Aprox SVP on modules is not uh, is, is a stays a hard problem as long as no one solves it, even if we have uh, some attacks on uh, on ideals. Okay, and between the choice uh, between module and, and rings for the choice, like uh, will I use one or the other? Uh, the advantage of modules is that it allows more flexibility on the parameters. Okay. So when you are uh, considering ring LWE, you have only elements in RQ. So everything A is uniform in RQ, S also. So the dimension of your ring will be N, and N has to be a power of two. And this is uh, quite a restriction because you don't have that many choices for n. It's uh, either 512, either 1024. And sometimes when you want to, to be uh, the, the, as efficient as you can, uh, it's a bit frustrating because uh, I, I give you an example of a parameter set. If I use n equals 512, I have 60 bits of security, so it's not enough. I want more than that. But using n equals 1024, I will have 440, and it's more than what I need. So my parameter will be kind of too big compared to what I need, and I, I have a, a lose in my efficiency because I have parameters which are bigger. So module allows you to, to do a, comp a compromise between this because you have A which will be uniform in RQ to the D, so D will be your rank, same for S. So now you can consider smaller N, smaller dimension for your ring, and uh, choose D to have your, uh, your global dimension, let's say. So if d equal to, I come back to 512. If d equal 4, I come back to 1024. But if d equal 3, I have 768. So something in between, uh, which will be maybe better for uh, the security that I need. So even if the two problems have similar difficulty. Uh, the choice of the modules comes from the. It comes from uh, the flexibility it allows for the choice of your parameters, mainly from that. And uh, that's why Kyber and Dilithium are using module LWE and Falcon, which is the third signature based on n on ring sys, has a more recent version also on module sys, because they also, uh, so I, I'm not sure what will happen with this uh, module version, but that's where people are going to use uh, the module variant instead of the ring one, 
because of this flexibility you can have. So now let's see uh, how it uh, works for the scheme. So we considered encryption scheme from now, so we will continue with encryption scheme. Uh, this is the, the first uh, scheme based on ring LWE. So when Dubashevsky, Pykert, and Regev uh, gave the proof that uh, ring LWE was at least as hard as uh, approx SVP on ideal lattices, they also proposed this, um, this ring encryption scheme, this encryption scheme based on ring LWE. So if you remember what we did yesterday, and I, I just show it uh, again. Uh, a few minutes ago, uh, you will see that it looks very similar to the Regev's encryption scheme, but we simply replace Z to the N by R. So the secret key is still uh, the secret of your ring LW instance. The public key uh, is still AB, where B equals AS plus E, and E is an error, so it's in RQ square. A uniform on a small R. A uh, small e, sorry. So now you can um, you can encrypt uh, when when uh, I I defined uh, the regex encryption, I used the uh, one bit to encry encrypt because it was easier. So now for free you go from one bit to n bit because you are considering a polynomial. You encrypt the message m the message m in R, and you say okay I will take his coordinate in 0, 1, so each of his coordinates will uh, correspond to one bit of, uh, of something you want to encrypt. Okay. And now I sample small element, R, E1, E2, in R, so when I say small, uh, you can think Gaussian, that's a good way of seeing it. And I compute the same, U and V, so U equal a times R plus E1, and V, it's B times R plus E2, plus Q over 2 times M. So I, I, I don't know if you remember, but for the Regev encryption, uh, we had a U, which was R times A, and V, it was R times B plus Q over 2 Thanks. times M. And I told you the, the security of an encryption scheme is this UV should uh, look, should be indistinguishable from a uniform uh, element. And it works because we have the, what we call the leftover H lemma, saying that if you take R uniform in ZQ to the M times N, and R uniform binary, then R times A, knowing A, is indistinguishable from uniform But here we are using something different because you will not have the same property uh, directly. So instead of having uh, u equal a times r, I add an error. And instead of having b, uh, v equal b times r, we also add an error and then q over 2 times m. And why does it work? Why does it still look uniform? An ID? Maybe I'll write uh, too small. No, no one. <laughs> I 
So I know a u equals a times r plus e1, and I know b v equals b times r plus e2. No, I want a. I want to to show that uh, u and v still looks uniform even if you know a and b. Does it look familiar? I'm not sure if I lost everyone or if my question is not clear or <laughs> or if I'm going too fast, I don't know. Well, I can wait a bit, we have plenty of time. <laughs> What's your exact assumption? We are looking for the assumption. Ah, for the assumption to get the uniformity. Yeah. I said when we use uh, integers, right. the assumption was the leftover schema. I cannot use it anymore, yeah. so I need another assumption to be sure my um, my uh, encryption, my ciphertext are still uniform. It's almost that, yeah, okay. So uh, it's a bit, uh, I, I, maybe the question was a bit uh, complicated because I, I didn't define it properly. It's a, it's a special case of ring. Okay, let's come back here. So it's it's string LW is the assumption. So it make me think I went too fast on ring LW. So let's quickly come back. So ring LW, you have samples of form A uniform in RQ. You have a secret S uniform in RQ. You have an error E from a Gaussian alpha Q, of parameter alpha Q. And you have samples of the form A, B equal A times S plus E, where this operation if is a polynomial multiplication. So if you look at it uh, in uh, Z, you have A that you can represent A0, A, or maybe it's too small. And you have this matrix with its structure that you multiply by S and you add 
a ring element. So that's the ring variant. And the module variant, instead of having elements in RQ, you take elements in RQ to the D. And then you have the scalar product instead of the multiplication. Because you have D elements, instead of having one ring elements, you have D. So is it clearer? So this is ring LW. So as uh, uh, LW yesterday, you have the search variant, which is uh, find your secret S, which is no in RQ. And you have the decisional variant, which say, OK, so this is in RQ square. If I give you A, B in RQ square, can you tell me if B equal A times S plus E, or if B is uniform in RQ? Same as LW yesterday. You have elements from this distribution, and you have the two variants, search and decisional. And from this, we can build an encryption scheme. I come back here. With, uh, as a secret key, the secret of ring LWE. As a public key, this A, B sample. And not to encrypt. I take a, unif uh, a small r, and I compute u equals a r plus e1, v equals b r plus e2, plus q over 2 times m. And what I was saying is that yesterday the assumption was the left over schema. Today we cannot use it, so we use ring LWE also in the encryption not only for the keys, as yesterday, but now in the, in the way we build the encryption, we add this error to hide A times R, and to be sure that no one can learn R given you. Okay? And same for V, because we consider that M, we just add M after, but we want to hide R from, from V, so we also add this error then B times R plus E2 will hide R, and you add your message, and it will encrypt all the coordinates of your message, which are 0 or 1. So adding E1 and E2 ensures the security of the scheme, but it will also be more complicated when you decrypt, because yesterday when we decrypted, we had only R times E, uh, an error of R times E. No, we have an error of R times E minus S times E1 plus E2. And that's why S has to be smaller. It was not necessary for the gaps encryption because S, the secret disappears when you decrypt. Here, the secret is multiplied by one of the two errors. So if you want to be able to decrypt, you need the secret to be small. It works because we know that uh, we can use the same distribution for the secrets and zeros. You take a bond on this uh, uh, noise you obtain at the end uh, to be sure it's less than Q over eight or something. And then you can decrypt the same way for each coordinate. The plaintext is zero if it's closer from zero, and it's Q over two it's close if it's closer from Q over two. It's one, sorry, if it's close, uh, closer from Q over two. So it's very similar. You just use this idea of replacing Z to the N by R. <laughs> Thanks. And it works uh, quite the same. Okay. So Kyber, the, the NIST uh, encryption uh, which will be standardized, is kind of exactly this scheme, using 
some parameters. So it uses uh, n equal 256 to have a different level of security depending on which d you choose. But instead of uh, using a Gaussian error, they use a binomial distribution for the secret and the error. So we don't have proof for this particular variance of module LWE, but uh, experiments and cryptanalysis uh, show that normally it's fine. So they use it because it's much more efficient. And they use also a lot of, uh, of uh, how to say, of tools uh, to be sure it's uh, the fastest and the uh, fast as possible and uh, it, that the, the, the size of uh, your keys, encryption, everything will be the shortest as possible. So they, for example, there are uniform public keys generated given a seed and a, a special function. So if, instead of giving each time all the matrix, you give only a seed and you can generate the same uh, uniform matrix. The multiplication operation use a number theoric transform, like a variant of the fast Fourier transform in rings. So it has a, a also, it gives you other condition on the, on the Q between Q and N for everything to work. But at the end, you have a lot of conditions on your parameter. It's kind of the tricky uh, part. It's finding good parameters. So Kyber is uh, giving you a lot of, uh, is giving you the parameters you should use. It's also compressed the size of the ciphertext because one of the difference between uh, post-quantum crypto and, uh, and classical uh, way to, to encrypt is uh, really the size of what you obtain at the end. So if I, so those uh, timings and size are from the Kyber website. So you have the three level of security. And if you compare with the current timings, the, the efficiency is quite uh, comparable in, in terms of cycles. But the, the, the problem comes from the, the size of the keys so for something classical, you have 32 bytes. And uh, for, you can see for Kyber, that's much more. So uh, there's still an improvement if you want to be really um, as uh, competitive as that we use today for some migration uh, to, to crypt um, cryptographic constructions. So there's still uh, some, some room for improvement. But we consider it's, uh, it's good enough to start so what they recommend is to start using Kyber on DDTM if you want to use a signature, but using a hybrid uh, construction, meaning you encrypt using Kyber and using a uh, solution that we use today, like uh, a CDH or something. So you use both in an hybrid way. Then you are secure uh, in a classical way, and you are also secure in a post-quantum way, but if Tomorrow, someone uh, attacks Kybers and everything is broken. You still have the classical security uh, if you use something hybrid. So that's what they recommend today. Uh, why? Because uh, you can imagine, even if you need some imagination, but you still uh, can imagine, and some people are, are that uh, if you have very sensitive data and you encrypt them to send them to someone, uh, some uh, people or gov government of uh, anyone can uh, uh, keep them in memory waiting for the quantum computer in 10, 20, 1,000 years, never. We don't know, but in case it happens, they will have the data and some of your data, maybe not your data, but some data, uh, sensible data, you don't want them to be uh, decrypted in 20 years. You want them to stay a secret uh, for the rest of uh, your life. So uh, if, uh, if it's the case of your data, you could consider uh, starting using hybrid encryption and not, uh, not the classical one. OK. So as I said, uh, one important part of this is choosing the parameters because behind uh, what I showed you, behind the reductions, be behind the security proof, uh, behind the, um, the correctness of the scheme. There are a lot of conditions and the dimensions, the modulo, the size of the error, a lot of things which are hidden. And to choose a parameter, 
uh, even if the Kyber is on a module LW assumption, we will do, we, we, they, they do the same as if it was an, an LW assumption, meaning that they consider the best known algorithm is a lattice reduction algorithm. So they consider an LW instance, not a module one. They, they don't consider the structure with dimension n times d, where d is the rank. And they use the lattice estimator. It's a very, very useful tool that you can find uh, online. Um, which is uh, updated very frequently with the last uh, known algorithm. And you say, okay, I want an LW instance with this dimension. Uh, I have a, uh, an instance with this dimension, this modulus, this error. Is it safe or not? And it will give you uh, the security, classical and, and quantum, behind your LW instance. It's very useful. But you have to take away the fact that it's on a module LWE and not only LWE. So there is no consideration on the structure. So why? So the, the answer is, uh, is written here, but uh, it's because we don't know how to take it into account. We, we don't know if really it's more efficient. If really you can do better uh, on those rings than on the, um, on the integers uh, on Z to Z. And some, for some people, it's a, it's a big issue. <laughs> I, maybe it should be for everyone, but for some people in particular, it's a very big issue. And for sure, we, we should uh, learn, we should be quite sure that it's, uh, it's, it's, it will not uh, break everything in a few years. But uh, if you consider the, the progress uh, made in the cryptanalysis uh, those last uh, 10 years, uh, I think we, we can start to be uh, quite confident that uh, it will be fine. Because approx SVP on module seems to be a, a very hard uh, problem to solve. And the, the restricted class on modules doesn't seem to, to have an impact for now. So if we, if we go back to this picture, uh, we see that the, the easiest problem here seems to be approx SVP on idols. So it's, it doesn't seem to be, it is approx SVP on idols, okay? So if we want to see how to attack like uh, those problems, we will start by this one. And even this one, it will uh, not be uh, simple. And there is really this gap between the rank d equal one and the rank d equal two. So if, even if we manage to have a good attack on this one, it will not have impact on the rest. Okay. Going from idols to modules, it's really not uh, that simple. So now for the Last part of this uh, talk, I will show you a bit, very high level, uh, how you can try to serve approx idol SVP. So for a long time, so it's uh, the link with what we did before it's, is uh, the fact that it's the one we want to start to attack, but as I say, it does not have impact on the security of the schemes, right? For a long time, there was nothing, and then in 2014, there was an idea to compute with a quantum computer, so with a quantum algorithm, some elements like S units and class group in polynomial time. And this was the start of a, a long series. So sorry, I, I wanted to write all the authors, but uh, I, uh, I, I will do it for the final version of the slides. But anyway, a long series of cryptanalysis work exploiting this idea that you can have uh, uh, with a quantum algorithm some elements in polynomial time, and it gives you, it will, it will give some better algorithm. So that's what we will uh, see uh, quickly uh, today. So before I continue, I thank Olivier and Andrea because uh, the next slides are not uh, mine. I, uh, I use a part of their, of their slides, okay. So this is what we call the Schnorr hierarchy. hierarchy sorry. Uh, it's a bit, uh, it takes time to, 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 to understand, I think, this, uh, <laughs> this picture, but uh, you have the time it takes to solve, uh, you take uh, idle SVP or SVP, 
So this is the time from, it goes from poly to exponential, and in between you have sub-exponential, okay? And then you have the approximation factor you can, uh, you can achieve. Also, it, it goes from poly to exponential. And the cryptography means for poly approximation factor, you have this exponential uh, best algorithm, okay? And BKZ, which is, um, let's say, the, the best that we can do, uh, will solve um, in uh, exponential time polynomial approximation factor and in uh, uh, polynomial term exponential approximation factor, okay? So you have to be careful because we are going from polynomial to exponential, so it, it looks linear, but it's not really linear, right? It's just a, a picture to, to understand what happened. So that's a non-structured case. With this uh, work started in uh, 2014, uh, Kramer, Ducarne, Vesolowski, in two works that we call CWY, uh, W, sorry, uh, they use uh, some, uh, some relations to obtain a better quantum algorithm. So what they show is that for um, what they show is that for a sub-exponential approximation factor, you can have a polynomial time algorithm using a quantum computer, okay? So the, it's, a, it's a orange, uh, it's in orange. So how to read that? You say, okay, no, for a sub-exponential approximation factor, you can have a polynomial algorithm. It's restricted to cyclotomic fields, and it's quantum. And there is a second line of works, which started with uh, the work of uh, Alice Pellet-Marie, Guillaume Oron, Damien Stélé in 2019. And they say, okay, no, we will perform a pre-computation. So it's important to understand that, otherwise you think it's uh, much easier than it is. You start with a pre-computation which is exponential, okay? And given this pre-computation, you will have those better timings. But those better timings are, uh, they are, you have to add them to the exponential pre-computation. So at the end, it's still exponential, okay? But as we will say uh, a bit later, is that in, in, uh, is this is in theory, and in practice, it's a bit better than that. But for now, what you should understand here is that, okay, given this pre-computation, which is exponential, you can have better timings. And we will see that in details uh, just after. And we call it uh, S-unit attack. Okay. So to see how it works, we will consider um, an intermediate problem, which is approx ideal SVP, but on principal ideal on principal ideals. So instead of having an ideal on which you want to solve approx SVP, you consider on principal ideal. So it will be a bit easier. So that was the first problem uh, completely uh, broken, and like. Uh, uh, maybe 10 years ago, uh, we, we was considering a, a scheme using a principal ideal as a, a public key saying, okay, it will be hard to recover a, gener a short generator. No, we don't do that anymore. We know it's, uh, if you take a principal ideal, it will be much easier. So it's not a good idea. So how does it work? The first step will be to find a generator not necessarily short, okay? And so this generator will be equal to G times U, where U is a unit of uh, O to ZK of the, the ring of integers of your number field. And this first step, it can be done in polynomial time, but with a quantum computer. So, uh, as I think you understood, the, the main idea of lattice-based crypto is to be post-quantum secure. So if we can do something in polynomial time with a quantum computer, we consider it's not post-quantum secure anymore. Once you've done that, uh, you want to find G given this element H. 
And for this, you use what we call the log embedding of the log unit lattice, which is the log of the unit of uh, OK. Okay, so I defined it uh, on the bottom. So you take the log of the embeddings. Uh, it's here, it's uh, the canonical embedding. So that's the result uh, of uh, Kramer, Ducamp, Eichert, and Regev in 2016. And they show that you have a quantum polynomial time or a classical uh, algorithm uh, with complexity 2 to the n over uh, 2 to the n to the 2 over 3 plus epsilon to solve this problem on cyclotomic fields. And what is interesting for us is how is this second step working. So we will try to see it uh, on, on this picture. You have your ideal, and you consider you, you had your, your first step uh, first, so you found this uh, generator H, which is not small. And what you want from H, which is not small, is to find a G, which is small, in your ideal. So you apply this uh, log, uh, log embedding, and now you will have a target, which is log, uh, the log embedding of H, and you will have your log unit lattice. And you know that uh, your target, log, uh, the log embedding of H, is equal to the log embedding of G plus the log embedding of a unit. And you want to find the log embedding of the unit and the unit to be able to find G. To do that, you want to find a short uh, set representative, and then you will project your log embedding of H and the span of your log unit lattice. It will give you an element, and you know that uh, the log embedding of your unit is closed, so you use a CVP solver. So CVP is the closest vector problem, so it allows you to find closed vectors closest vectors on the lattice of your target to find uh, this uh, log k of u element using CVP. So I project on the span and then I use my CVP solver and then I find log u of k in my log unit lattice. And once I've done that, I just have to come back and to compute h over u and hope it's j, hope it's short. So you will have to trust me to, to how to say, uh, that it works. I will not uh, prove it here. But uh, using this algorithm, you will be able to find uh, the short g given h, which is not short. So thanks to the uh, log, unit, uh, log unit lattice. Okay. So that was for the uh, principal ideal program. And now, if you want to do the same on general ideals, it becomes a, a bit more complicated. So it's uh, okay. So you you consider still k your number field, i the i, I your ideal, and now you can choose. So it's not uh, the instance you choose it. Uh, S a set of prime ideals, and S. Um, will be your factor basis. So maybe I will write it here. So you choose a factor basis. And instead of, um, of finding H generator of your ideal, now you will find a S generator of your ideal, meaning a H um, that you can write. Uh, I will not read it, but uh, as uh, on my slide. Okay. So this first step, you can also do it in quantum polytime. The question is, how do you do the second step? Because now the second step is a bit trickier. 
you cannot just, the naive ID will be, okay, no, I can also try to reduce H directly, but H, no, as this product of, uh, of ideals, uh, which is quite big also, and if you don't reduce this product before or, bit, or in the, your algorithm, if you don't reduce it, when you reduce H, we'll have this uh, volume, um, this volume uh, which will give you still a big element. So reducing H directly without dealing with this product of idols will not uh, give you a good result. So you have to do a bit better than that. Uh, sorry, I didn't say. The, the first one, it's uh, not a short one. First step. Okay. So it's a. Uh, for the second one, to find, uh, to reduce H and find G. No, that's not clear. I can come back a bit, right? So here I have two steps. I find my generator. I don't, I don't say how I do that, okay? I just say you have a, a polynomial time quantum algorithm, and then I reduce it, okay? So this was how I reduce it. Yeah, but how do you find the... You? Yeah, yeah, I use a CVP solver, yeah, exactly. Uh, because I don't have this decomposition in uh, ideals. Yeah, so because it's a... It's an easier problem? Oh yeah, it's an easier problem, yeah. And with the decomposition of uh, ideals, it gives something bigger. And if you just do the same, you will have something too big. But okay, that's the intuition. So I have to reduce this part, okay? So for this, there are two, uh, two different line of works. The first one, uh, C, D, W, say, okay, we will first reduce this uh, product that it's uh, too large uh, for, for finding a, a, a short h, and then I will use the log embedding to, uh, to go back to my previous case. Okay, that's uh, what uh, CDW uh, do. On the second line of works, starting with uh, PHS uh, 19, is to say, okay, instead of doing one step than the other, I will reduce both at the same time. I will deal with both my ideal and uh, this product of, of ideals. So I modify the log embedding to the log S embedding, which is the previous log embedding on which I had those, uh, um, those terms, which are the valuation and uh, the log of the algebraic norm of each ideal. Then I deal with reducing H and reducing this product at the same time. So who works, so first uh, with uh, Olivier Bernard, and um, then with uh, Andrea, Olivier, and uh, Chungui and Guyen. What we see, uh, is it a good idea to, yeah, it seems to be a good idea to use this uh, log uh, KS embedding, but how far can we go in solving ideal uh, SVP using uh, this, uh, this algorithm, this method? So our first work in 2020, I was like, okay, uh, we can prove, uh, so we, we change, we modify the definition of the log, uh, log S embedding. We say we can prove it's as good as a PHS 19 in uh, theory, but in practice it's much better. So we, we started by having those uh, uh, practical results of solving ideal SVP in, uh, for cyc cyclotomics, only for cyclotomics, uh, in dimension uh, 70. So 70, it may look small, two steps and uh, we was very happy of that. But it was still way too small when I say we use uh, those big dimensions. So the question was, can we extend this to higher dimension? And there are two major obstructions when you are running experiment to extend it to higher dimension. The first one is the decomposition of H. So if, if it's uh, this first step, 
Why? Because I said that we have a, a quantum algorithm in polynomial time. So if I want to run experiment, I don't have a quantum computer. I cannot uh, compute this decomposition. And the second one uh, was to compute this uh, group of S units uh, that we need uh, to run the experiment. We will need a, a basis and uh, to compute it uh, in dimension higher than 70, it was, uh, it was quite uh, complicated. So we used the uh, new results that uh, Olivier had uh, also during his, uh, his PhD thesis on the Stickelberger ideal, uh, which allow to obtain uh, an explicit short basis of S uh, of M, which is the Stickelberger ideal. So it's a particular ideal. Uh, the result of Olivier shows that you can build, that's really the, the important part, it's constructive. You can build generators, you can compute them efficiently, and we use them as a, um, as a first basis to have a, a basis of a full rank sublattice that we complete with cyclotomic units, explicit Stichel, uh, those explicit Stichelberger generators, on other units uh, uh, coming from a real subfield. So this is the only part which is sub-exponential, but as we already managed to have a lot of elements, it's only in dimension n over two, that's why we managed to run it for the experiments. So given all of this, we have a basis of four sub-lattice, and we can obtain more elements of the lattice using the two saturations, so Andrea mentioned it yesterday. So you can uh, ask him if you want more detail on, on this, uh, on this uh, algorithm of two saturation. But the idea is to find uh, power elements in uh, your sub lattice, in the, in this, uh, no, in the lattice, using the elements you have in the sub lattice. And then when you compute the square root, it will give you more elements. And it will give you, it will, uh, uh, reduce the index, like uh, it will reduce uh, the density of your of your lattice, and it will be faster to to solve uh, to solve the problem in this better lattice. So with those ideas, we managed to to run uh, experiments up to dimension 2010. As we cannot, we still don't have a comp quantum computer. We cannot solve the first decomposition uh, of, a, of uh, the ideal generated by H. So what we do is we simulate the targets in the log space to see uh, if we manage to solve uh, the, the problem with uh, the simulated targets. Okay. So to, to give you the, an, an idea of our results, I, um, this is uh, the, the result of CDW, so the previous uh, algorithm in 2019. So that's the approximation factor that they managed to, to solve for the degree of the cyclotomic field. So in red, in red, that's their results. And in uh, green, that's a lower bound of uh, their results. They say, okay, uh, our algorithm has this lower bound. So normally we can, with our algorithm, we will never manage to obtain better approximation factors than uh, those yellow, uh, yellow dots. We we'll first work on S units, so this experiment I just mentioned, we obtain those approximation factor, which is already uh, quite nice in, in small dimension, but when you, uh, when you go in higher dimension, it's, it's not as good. And uh, it's very important to go in higher dimension. I didn't, I didn't say that already, but uh, because in lattice uh, problems, in small dimension, it may work uh, much better than in higher dimension for some reason. You may have a particular, um, things may be much better, you don't really know why. So, so you want to see in higher dimension if it's still efficient or not. And when we use a two saturation approximation, we obtain much better results and sometimes even better than the CDW uh, lower one. So we are quite happy uh, with that. And finally, uh, this is in, uh, in purple, the last, uh, so it's maybe a bit hard to see them, but this is what you obtain with uh, the full S-unit basis. So 
So the, the, that was the experiment we, we had in the first uh, result uh, with Olivier. But you cannot go uh, further than this dimension around 80. But uh, we obtain exactly the same as in experiments with the simulation, so we are quite confident that uh, we are going in the good direction. So what does it say is that for dimension up to 200, we have a better algorithm for ideals, so we are quite happy with that. But does it have an impact on a lattice-based crypto? No. Okay. But uh, that's fine. That's how we start uh, doing better or using uh, crypto analysis. So it, it's just a first step. If we want to someday have a better crypto analysis on module, uh, we need to start with ideals. But um, really, it's not uh, simple at all to go from a, from a, once you have an, an algorithm from idols, it will not be very simple to, to, to use it for modules. It's very different, uh, actually. So, so it's, it's a theory, like, I mean, let's say it's a theoretical step, but it's a first step. I think first step is a good uh, way to see it. Okay. So what, to conclude uh, this, uh, this, uh, those two days of, uh, of talk on lattice-based crypto. I hope you understood that, in theory, it's a very nice way to build a, a cryptographic construction. And when I say very nice way, it's because we have those full proofs, security proofs, showing that the security of your construction is directly rely on the uh, hard problem on uh, um, lattices. So algorithmic problem, which are very hard to solve. On, on um, the, the, the hard instances of uh, those problems. In practice, we have to use uh, uh, structured variants to be more efficient, which gives a security based on restricted class. But it seems that for no, in theory, it doesn't have any impact. And in practice, we have to use the cryptanalysis and the best known algorithm to solve the problem, to attack the, the constructions to choose our parameters. So that's how it works. Uh, once you understand that, there are a lot of things you can do. You can work on improving the reduction to, to obtain better parameters and hope that one day the parameters that you can prove will be the same as the parameters that you obtain uh, with script analysis. You can work on, uh, on uh, building uh, new constructions or improving the constructions and they can be used one day in practice, like. Uh, Looking at all the all the, the applications we have today, there are still uh, several kind of constructions uh, that we need to build. Or you can work on the crypto analysis part and uh, try to attack the schemes, try to see if uh, the structure uh, gives a um, uh, better algorithm to solve the problems, and uh, what is the impact on the parameters. That's the, and of course, there are still uh, a lot of other things you can do on this on this area. Okay, so that's the conclusion. That's almost what I just say. So, so I hope you, you learned uh, something, even if you didn't, uh, you will not remember everything. I hope you learned uh, a bit of something uh, on, uh, on lattices and uh, on lattice based cryptography. Uh, you can remember that the NIST. Uh, Standard, uh, Dilithium, and uh, Kyber uh, are based on this module variants of uh, LWE. And that uh, soon you will have uh, probably the opportunity to start uh, using them, uh, this standardized ver version. And that uh, on all those problems uh, that you can start to, to attack, to, to solve, uh, Approx Ideal SVP uh, seems to be the easier one. But the, even if you manage to, to find an attack against this problem, it will not impact uh, that space cryptography. But still, it will be a, a first step. And after solving Approx Ideal SVP, you can start uh, solving uh, Approx Module SVP. And then you will have an impact. But uh, I don't think it will be uh, soon. Okay. I think I will stop here. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>
Um, thank you for the presentation. I have two questions. Uh, one is like, uh, how you mentioned the lower bound. Yeah. How do you obtain the lower bound? Like, is it to assume that a lot of steps are free or? You mean the CDW yes. lower bound? That's yeah. uh, their lower bound. They say they, in their paper, they show that the algorithm uh, could achieve this lower bound, not better. Okay. And also you mentioned like practical improvements uh, by knowing a bit more about like the log uh, OKS uh, lattice. Can it translate it to, into a theoretical improvement in the, in the complexity or? I mean, if you have more knowledge on it, or that, that's a yeah, that's a good point. We we really tried uh, because for the first uh, results with Olivier, uh, we had those theoretical uh, results, and then we saw that in practice it was much better, and we really tried to obtain the theoretical uh, counterpart, but uh, there was some bond. We I, I think the bond was not good enough to to show in, in theory that it works, but. I, it should be at some point someone should manage to, to show it, but okay. uh, we miss some uh, some bond to 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 do the full proof. And um, just also, you mentioned that it was easier to start with ideal SVP and then module SVP. But so why is it possible, for example, instead of looking at uh, module SVP, just to look at like ring LWE, look at if you find better attacks than just plain LWE? Uh, um, yeah, you can. I mean, can you, you, derive, you want to attack uh, directly ring LWE? Yes, and, instead yeah. of like. Uh, but you, you have this uh, equivalent between ring LWE, module LWE, and uh -oh. uh, and uh, approx module SVP. Oh, okay. So I see. this mm. turns to say, okay, maybe it's it will be hard. Well, okay. People tried, I, I think, I guess, but uh, that's really because the reduction is only one way for approx ideal SVP, Which and that uh, in. A, also in another paper on the uh, module LLL, uh, I, they, they show that uh, uh, for a module between the rank two and the rank n, it's quite uh, equivalent. But the rank one seems to be different. Mm -hmm. That's why we, we think the rank one is easier. Thank you. Other questions for Adeline? So in just a little one, um, in this game in cryptography uh, played between people that uh, want to uh, try to do small um, uh, efficient uh, uh, crypto system and people they try to attack. So now quantum um, crypto analysis is coming. Who is going faster? <laughs> so quantum crypto analysis is the reality. People really invest on them because often we we are um, uh, aware about results on more efficient uh, uh, LWE or variants, but now also quantum crit analysis is, uh, is going well. I think there are still a, a few people working on quantum, quantum crit analysis, maybe not enough. So okay. clearly the, the priority today is uh, to use all of this to, well, when to, to, because we, we have those uh, new standards and the priority is to say, okay, now we want to be sure that we can replace everything we use with a uh, lattice-based crypto. But uh, so I think it's going faster than, uh, than the crypto analysis uh, effort. But uh, clearly both are, are important. Okay. So if you don't have any question, thank you again, Adeline. Thanks.